Hi there. I made sustainability my default choice in 2015. And as a transport mafioso, my vision for 2030 is that our cities will have no more traffic and there will be no more need for us to commute. My vision for 2030 for sustainable transport in our cities is that we should not be commuting like we do right now for two, three hours a day, stuck in traffic, staring with dead eyes at the dull gray concrete mushroom around us as we painfully inch through kilometer long traffic jams surrounded by a cacophony of honking. My vision is that transport in our cities should be humane and considerate. And for this, we should not be commuting at all. Why do we commute? It causes untold hours of lost productivity. That's three hours in a day that you aren't getting back. If you think about it, it adds up to nearly 30 days worth every year that you spend just in traffic. It causes a severe health impact, mental and physical, and not just while you yourself are stuck in the traffic jam, but for everyone else. Because the particulate matter, the soot, the greenhouse gases, they persist in the air, damaging all of us over time. Let me share with you my example of Bangalore traffic, the famous Silkpur traffic jam. I live about six kilometers across from where I used to work, and this had me crossing Silkpur. So every day I had to cross Silkpur, and then on the way back, cross Silkpur. And this used to take me one hour just to cross Silkpur. I left that job after about a year, and in part because of this famous traffic jam, and moved to another job up north of Bangalore. This was 25 kilometers away from my residence. The time that it used to take me, the same. One hour, one way. This is what traffic does to us. And my vision for 2030 is that our cities will not need such long transport commutes. We will not need to transport ourselves for so long. We would live in cities that are organized in a way that everything that we need, whether it's school or workplaces, whether it's parks or recreations, shops or essential services, leisure and entertainment will just be a walk or a bike ride away. My vision is that changing our cities this way would open up unimaginable real estate in our cities that we can dedicate to rich, biodiverse lung spaces, tree-filled boulevards and lush green walkways and bike lanes. And so that anytime we do need to transport something, it is done in an efficient and in a humane way. To reach um, this extremely achievable vision by 2030, we just need to do three small things. One, avoid transport. Avoid transport at any time. Two, transform transport. And number three, overhaul our cities. And I hope that at the end of these 15 minutes, you will have three simple ways in which you can transform transportation and our cities starting today. Step one, avoid transport. And when you do, do it in an efficient and in a humane way. Because of congestion. We all know congestion on our roads. Indians spend more time on our daily office commute than people in most countries in the world. A study by Move and Sync in uh, a Bangalore-based company across uh, multiple cities in India in the IT corridors found out on the office travel time that we average more than two hours every day on our roads. That's 7% of your day. And if you want to think about it, that's 10% of your waking hours that you're spending just in transport. And are we getting anywhere fast? No, we average a less than three minutes a kilometer. Another study by BCG found out about the cost. Cost of traffic jams in just four Indian cities is $22 billion a year. Where does this cost come from? It comes from fuel waste, it comes from reduced productivity, it comes from air pollution, and it comes from accidents. Just in one of these four cities, which is Delhi, the $9.6 billion of cost is about 12% of its GDP. Think about peak hour congestion. Peak hour congestion is the additional time that you take to travel any given distance during a peak hour traffic time versus any other time. In Indian cities, we spend 149% on an average more 
during our peak hour congestion. And this is again, so 67% on average in other Asian cities. And these are not just any Asian cities. These are highly congested, densely populated urban, urban centers like Hong Kong and Manila, um, KL and Bangkok. These are not open cities. These are not less congest congested. These are very densely populated, which leads to situations like this. Which brings me to step two. We need to transform our transport because of our health and the air pollution and the impact of air pollution on our health. Vehicular tailpipe emissions are a major cause of pollution in our cities, anywhere between 14 to 43 percent. Right? Air pollution is linked directly to diseases that kill. Life expectancy in Indian cities is down by 2.6 years just because of air pollution. And a recent study found out that when pregnant women breathe polluted air, the sooty particles are able to enter the placenta and reach the placenta via the bloodstream. The famous Delhi pollution that happens every year around um, Diwali, a day outside at this time in Delhi is equivalent to smoking 50 cigarettes. What can you do right now to transform this? go electric. A petrol scooter costs 2 rupees a kilometer versus 30 paise a kilometer for an electric scooter, saving you 1.7 rupees for every kilometer that you travel. So this is for everyone who counters me saying that, you know, electric transport is expensive. On the other hand, you might counter by saying, oh no, you know, we don't get enough range. 75% of all of us in Indian cities commute less than 35 kilometers a day. That's 35 kilometers up and down. So if you find yourself an electric vehicle that gives you a range of anything, 60 to 80 kilometers, that is largely sufficient for our needs. So this is about personal transport. What about B2B transport, right? What about the commercial vehicles? It has been found out over multiple studies that intra-city transport within 150 kilometers a day is already economically viable to go electric. So who are these B2B players I speak about? These are high utilization vehicles. So um, people like last mile connectivity, uh, delivery companies, logistics companies, transport companies, anyone who does within 150 kilometers a day can already go electric and it's already economically viable for them to do so. Continuing on the previous example of my transport and travel and commute in Bangalore, the travel that I used to do, whether it was across Silkwood or when I used to travel up to the bank, north of Bangalore, all of that was done in me and my little yellow EV. Uh, Bangalore is a very hilly city. It has a lot of ups and downs and it, is, it has quite a number of flyovers as well. So over every 25 kilometers that I used to travel, I used to regen five kilometers. So EVs in themselves are so much more efficient than petrol vehicles. I would regen five kilometers for every 25 kilometers that I would travel. I still travel between 40 to 70 kilometers every day, uh, depending on my meetings, on my customer visits or any other uh, visits that I have. I'm still traveling 40 to 70 kilometers a day. I add to the congestion. Yes, I agree that I add to the congestion on the roads because I travel by car, but I do not add to the vehicular tailpipe emissions. This brings me to step three. We need to overhaul our cities, right? We need to overhaul our cities because on one hand, we're solving for climate change. All of us here are here at this event because we're trying to solve for climate change. On the other hand, we're trying to build cities for three billion people. It's a doubling of the urban environment. It is estimated that by 2050, 70% of humans will be living uh, in cities. That's 7 billion people. 7 billion people will be living in cities and our current model of transport in cities, of urbanization in our cities is broken. We cannot handle this doubling of the urban environment. Over the last few months, we've all been in this pandemic and we found out that, you know, that meeting could have been a phone call or an email or most of us most of our work does allow us to do remote work. I believe that this is the best moment to redefine our urban and our mobility future. 
because we don't want cities that are built for cars. If we continue to add fleets and fleets of conventional cars to our roads and then cutting down all the trees on our roads to expand them to meet these fleets of cars, our cities will become unbearable to live in. We want cities where we can walk. We want cities where kids can bike. We want cities where we have public transportation, lots of it, and public transport that's clean and dignified. In conclusion, I want to leave you with three things. Walk. There is no great city that you don't enjoy walking in. You don't go there. The places you go on vacation are the places you want to walk. Whether it's Avenue de Champs-Élysées in Paris or La Ramblas in Barcelona, the places you want to vacation in are the places you can walk. Why not make it everywhere? And what is a walkable city? Walkable city has been defined as a city where there is a proper reason to walk, the walk has to be safe and it has to feel safe, whether it's for women or children or seniors. The walk has to be comfortable and it's interesting. Because of air quality, we found out over the pandemic that the air quality index uh, across all of our cities improved remarkably. Why don't we just stop polluting? Why not use our feet and our bikes more? And that way, the way we move can keep us healthier as well. We want public transportation clean and dignified public transportation for the longer distances. And until uh, we reach this place, please use fully electric, battery operated electric vehicles. There are no tailpipe emissions or direct emissions. This means that there's no smoke, there's no unburned carbon or soot, there are no carbon oxides and sulfur oxides and nitrous oxides and no particulate matter that come out of the vehicle while it's being driven. So three steps that you need to do to transform transport and overhaul our cities starting today. While you are in cities, for anything less than five kilometers, bike or walk. For anything that's between five and 10 kilometers, use electric transport. And for anything more than 10 kilometers, choose public transport always and make our cities more livable. For anything less than five kilometers, walk or bike as often as you can and convince as many people as you can. This will not just keep you healthy, but it will reduce the congestion for essential services like ambulances. It will also give those people with limited mobility like seniors or people who are differently abled more space on the roads. For anything between five and 10 kilometers, choose electric always over ICE transport. For as, ma as many city travel tra uh, points as you can, for anywhere you need to go between five and 10 kilometers, use electric transport. There are many mobility providers right now who give you electric two-wheelers on rent. Choose them and talk to your fleet operators, talk to your delivery companies, ask them to shift to electric. And for anything that's more than 10 kilometers, use public transport as often as you can. Metros in the Indian cities are already clean and dignified. They're air conditioned, they're comfortable. Our air conditioned buses are comfortable. There is still a ways to go for last mile connectivity. And I will agree, there is still a ways to go for this. But if there is more and more utilization of public transport, then more and more options will definitely come up for last mile connectivity. So in conclusion, if I got to summarize, I would say for livable cities, bike or walk for anything less than five kilometers, use electric transport for anything less than 10 kilometers, and always try to choose public transport for anything more than 10 kilometers and make your city a city where someone else would want to vacation in. Thank you.